Welcome back to some more Astralocaster, my querens. We are diving back in where we left off, where we've been talking to Civil Fortescue. This was the final consultation for this querent. We got the letter of recommendation. Everything is fine. I will find a way to save my husband from the tower, for after all, tomorrow is another morrow. All right. Ah, yes, the uh, toils of time. We all grow old. Good day to you, young sir. May I say, your playing of Titus Andronicus's comely mother was excellent well. A wondrous performance, Mr. Bell. I well, I did ask for a man's part, like he told me, but boss man just winked at me and said he'd consider it, but only if I convince Mistress Burbage I'm a man first. Forsooth, how strange. I wonder what he meant by that. I know what he means though, innit? Mistress Burbage wants to move to me and Mr. Burbage knows all about it. On my word! But surely, Mr. Bell, if Mistress Burbage's attentions occasion you discomfort, you have merely to tell her so. Make it plain you wish your relationship to remain professional and bid her abstain from any amorous advances. You what? Nay, sir. If I air her, she'll be vexed and I could lose my job. Know you what I mean? Ah, I see, yes. If she were to take umbrage, she might use her influence over her husband to prevent you from getting work. Well, I do have a recipe for a very effective aphrodisiac. Nay? Then let us see what the stars advise. How might Humphrey Bell calm the ardour of Mistress Burbage without it costing him his career? Indeed, I, uh, I fail to see the issue. Maybe she's like a fairy? <laughs> I don't know. Um, how might I calm the ardour of Mistress Burbage, which has Burgess's, Burgess's wife? Hmm. Well, Ruler of the heart, this is just an imbalance of color, immule bile. Mistress Burbage oh, has a choleric temperament. When it comes to the affairs of the heart, she prefers to be the one in charge. And Scorpio, ruler of the productive uh, system, represents a habit and an imbalance in blood. Mistress Burbage is troubled with a habit for indulging lustful passions. But how does this solve anything? Hmm. How oh, indeed. I was hoping we could like, as our as his doctor, we could prescribe him with having a an, an STD, a sexually transmitted disease, and then he would be like, well, uh, would you want? And then she wouldn't want to have sex with him. Condom, condoms suddenly exist in this day and age, you have to remember. So um, that could have been a way to do it, but for him to avoid... But I don't know, man. Um, ruler of the heart or... Yeah, I fail to see how any of these are a solution to his problems. This, uh, this is diagnosing the, the, la the lady, but how does that help him? Anyway, um, she prefers to be the one in charge. Uh, I suppose it's this one here. I don't think she prefers to be the one in charge. It's the, it's the husband that has to go and get her a lover, apparently. So that doesn't scream to me that she's like preferring to be in charge. And so instead, she's just got a lustful passion habit. And then the husband is trying to help out. So let's see where this takes us. It would seem Mistress Burbage's behavior can be attributed to her excessive sanguinity. To wit, there is an imbalance of blood in her body. It compels her towards an indulgence in lustful passions. What do you mean, like? She's ill or something? Her grabbing me backstage and trying to bed me, tis an imbalance of blood making her do all that. So uh, how do I help her fix her problem, then? Her problem? Oh, nay, Mistress Burbage is not ill. Forsooth, indulging in her lustful passions is a most healthsome pursuit, which doubtless brings her much pleasure. Indeed. The only person who has a problem with her lustful activities is you. You what? 
Perchance you could find a means of adding cooling and drying foods to the lady's diet to counteract the fiery moistness of her sanguinity. I suggest uh, myrtle berries, lettuce, and mallows. Hmm. Methinks I can add them plants to the morning potage she takes during rehearsal. And if that don't make her move from me, I might start adding poison in it. Wow, okay. Well, I, I don't know, man. I hope that works for him. Apparently he was happy with the advice. Humphrey Bell, the wife of one of the current's bosses, had designs upon his person, and he wished to know how to comb her door. I did judge Mistress Burbage as having a habit for lustful passions, mm -hmm. and advised the current to introduce cool, drying foods to her diet. Methinks the current was a little pleased with me for me with me for the reading I gave this day. All right, uh, oh, we just need one more good one. Next time, Mistress Burbage stokes the fire and tells me to take off my doublet or doublé, uh, I'll tell her. I'll tell her man's not hot. I'll tell her man's not hot, in it. <laughs> that guy's accent is so weird. Mail from Sybil Fortescue. Okay, sir, I have the best of tidings. I have managed to use my influence to ensure my husband is safe from the executioner's block. Indeed, my petitioning of courtiers and their wives has been so successful that the royal court is now abuzz with the talk of innocence of the of Captain Fortescue and how he has been the victim of a gross miscarriage of justice. A sonnet upon the subject has been composed, and I hear tell that Mr. Shakespeare intends to write a play about it. You are most grateful of currents, Sibyl Fortescue. Mm -hmm. Lord Lancelot returns. Good evening, Mr. Moore. How may I do you service? I have a mind uh, to take up a profession and would have your counsel on it. For I must say, your advice thus far has been most excellent. Counseling me not to marry that sly succubus Emma Dyer did veritably save my life. Indeed, I have heard it rumoured that her husbands have a lamentable habit of dying, if you follow my meaning. In short, their deaths are most unnatural and not at all accidental. Do you understand what I'm telling you, Foreman? Aye, I do, Mr. Moore. Pray afford me a moment to recover from the excess of shock and surprise I do feel <laughs> upon being told of the lady's true nature. Now, you say you wish to take up a profession. Tis a military career you're considering, I presume? You wish to distinguish yourself in battle? Nay, tis a career in the church. I have a mind to take holy orders. You wish to become a clergyman? Pray tell, how came you by this notion? "'Twas given me by the top dog himself, the Archbishop of Canterbury. He's a hunting chum of my father's. I, the Archbish, is a crack shot with a musket. You should see him at it, Foreman. Give the man half an hour and a pouch of lead shot, and he'll turn your duck pond into duck soup. It seems the Archbish has had his eye on me for quite some time. Verily, indeed. He says I show great promise, and that under his personal tutelage I should rise very rapidly. He even said he has a mind to make me Bishop of Salisbury. Ah, yes, the much-coveted Bishopric of Salisbury. But before I make my final decision, Foreman, I thought I'd better come to you first. Aye, very wise of you. Then let us see what the stars foretell. Would my querent... Lancelot Moore enjoy success as a clergyman. I'm still giggling. It's the Archbish. Mm -hmm. And obviously he wants to bang Lancelot. So where do we take that? The thing is that I really want to be on, in the good graces of his grace. Uh, are we all ready? I forget what his name is. It is John Whitgift. And we already have his letter of recommendation. All right. He's been looking for a Bishop of Salisbury for a long time, and I think we should help him out. So we will advise Lancelot to take that path. And here we go. Let's see. House of Hidden Motives. This represents a wickedly, uh, represents wickedly going back on one's word. 
Vile hidden motives are at work. Promises will be broken. Uh, House of Ambitions represents Lancers a lot more and suggests someone is out of touch with reality. Moore's ambitions are misguided. He is being unrealistic about his suitability for the church. Yeah. Service, uh, House of Service to Others represents uh, the Archbishops and suggests unpleasantness. Serving under the Archbishop would be unpleasant. Yeah, do we have Lancelot's uh, recommendation? We do. All right, so we can't really screw it up. Uh, in B, we find House of Good Angels. This shows a transformative change. Good angels would transform more, turning him from uh, his present course of idleness and dissipation. House of God's help. This represents women. God will help more with women. <laughs> uh, house of love and romance. This represents gossip and seriousness. Represents religious piety. London will resound with flattering gossip of Moore's piety and seriousness, thus enhancing his romantic appeal. All right, this is what everyone wants. He might regret it later, but right now that's kind of what he wants to hear, I think. So let's go for it. And the Archbishop will get to uh, get to have his way with Lancelot, as it were. You should indeed take holy orders, Mr. Moore, for the stars do indicate that life as a clergyman would transform you. It would turn your mind away from vice and idle pursuits. I see. So, there is your answer. Ah, oh, yay. Uh, but do the stars give any additional reasons as to why I might pursue a career in the church? Aside from the fact of it being godly and such. Well, my chart does also suggest that doing so would enhance your eligibility as a suitor. For taking orders would serve as a signal of your wisdom and virtue. Oh, verily? Aye, it says here that if you become a clergyman... Ah, yes, that God will reward you with ladies. God's underlumps! <laughs> and to think all the hours I've wasted learning to play the lute for such a purpose. I thank you, Foreman, for you have helped me find my true calling. I shall take holy orders and begin dispensing wise counsel and spiritual guidance to all the ladies of London. Well, good as reason as any. The Quran did wish to know whether he could find success if he were to pursue a career in the Church of England. I did advise the Curran that such a career would be most advantageous to him, because he thinks the Curran was pleased with me for the reading I gave this day, and that would be the final one with him, I think. I must assist upon some latitude with the mo robes I will wear. Surely a monogram of painting in the sleeves would be permitted. <laughs> sure, Lancelot. Good luck with that. Here comes crafty Hmm, and she returns the uh, widower, the black widow. Oh, God give you good day, madam. Good day to you, sir, and well met. And how fares your husband, Lady Dyer? I recall you were worried for his health. Twas the Dyer beat, the disease you judged him as having. He died from wounds that never healed. You mean the wound on his lordship's hand? But I recall you saying it was quite small. Oh yes, that wound was, but he acquired many more. One evening, whilst we were summering at our country estate, the stone railing of our balcony gave way, and he fell into some particularly thorny rose bushes. Verily, how distressing. And he never recovered from the scratches. Nay, twas most tragical and so forth. Well, I am sorry to hear of your husband's passing, but, uh, madam, are you quite well? You do not seem yourself this day, if I may remark on it. Dr. Foreman, I am more myself than you have ever seen me, for during these past years I have been playing a role, a role that has served me well, to be sure, but I am grown tired of it. Indeed, I am not proud of my dissembling. I'm not proud of some other things besides. 
and doubtless you are come to unburden yourself by confessing your, uh, what those things are. What? Nay, of course not. As I was saying, whilst my dissimulations have afforded me wealth and status, such a life as I have lived has not fulfilled me. For though I have been married many times, and known many men, I have always lacked one important thing. A moral compass? And that thing is love. <laughs> In short, I have found love, Dr. Foreman. And the object of my affection is not one of these privileged popinjays I've met at the royal court. Nay, tis a real man. A man is it who me? knows what it is to make his own way in the world. Oh, you... You mean to say, <laughs> you mean you and I? Verily, upon seeing him play Tamara in Titus Andronicus at the Globe one even, I was, well, my heart was took. I see. You are in love with a player then, I take it. I, <laughs> and I wish to marry him. But first, I would know whether such a match be advisable. Is our love true? Or is my considerable coin and property where his true affections lie? Such a deception would not surprise me in truth. Well, nay, doubtless it would not. Let us see whether the stars can tell us. Oh. Sorry, I had to sneeze. We're back. And <clears throat> let's see what we can do for Emma here. Emma has not given us her letter of recommendation yet, so we might yet acquire it. Should I marry the young player who has my, won my heart? I think we should advise here that yes, even if he's out of the money, uh, out for the money, because then who cares, right? Uh, and she might finally be with someone she actually wants to be with and not kill him. House of Hidden Motives, this indicates evil. Imus Bo uh, hides evil intentions. So. House of Hopes. This is just being with, out of touch with reality. Emma's head has been turned. She's deluded in her hopes. House of Wills and Inheritance indicates intelligence. The mind of Emma's beloved is on the coin he would inherit when Emma dies. Uh, there might even be some <clears throat> uh, sweet, sweet uh, karma in in that uh, in, in letting that happen. <laughs> House of relationship with the current, this indicates untrustworthiness and a rom romantic partner. If Emma and I were a romantic partner, I would not trust her. Uh, maybe don't tell her that. House of duties, this suggests being impossible to please. Emma's duty as a wife would be impossible to fulfill. Yep, sounds about right. House of unborn children, this indicates cruelty. It is cruel to deprive a man of children. Oh, is she that old? But still, this is um, not what she wants to hear, obviously. So, House of Relationships, this represents perspective and transformation. Emma's relationship with her young man has changed her. House of Marriage, it suggests faithfulness and time and aging. A marriage between Emma and her beau would be beautiful and enduring. Indeed. The of course it would. bless the match between you and the young man. They do not think it would be bad for him in some way. They do not judge. The chart indicates that your relationship with this young man has changed you. It would be a faithful, lasting marriage. Verily, I must own I dared not expect such a happy ending to my story. I thank ye heartily, Dr. Foreman. All right. Emma Sharp, the Quirant, did wish to know whether her whether she should marry the young player she is in love with. I did advise the Quirant to marry her young beau. Methinks the Quirant is most pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. Da da da! And next we'll hear of her. She's been murdered by her new husband. I shall go this evening to the playhouse uh, and ask my Humphrey to ask me to marry him. That is indeed our Humphrey then. Right? Humphrey Bell, yes. Interesting. Okay. Uh, this is not the lady that he was talking about. So maybe we get to see Humphrey and may give him the good advice of not marrying her.
This makes me think that Simon might be interested in Humphrey. I don't know. Good day, Mr. Bell. I see here in my notes the last time you came to us for counsel regarding Mistress Burbage and her tender advances. Aye, and the advice you gave me to cool her down and that worked her treat. Since I've been putting them hey. hands in her potage, she spends so much time in the privy, hardly ever see her now. That is... Well, I am glad my advice achieved the desired outcome and Mistress Burbage is no longer bothering you. Tis about another lady I'm come this day. Tis a member of the audience who comes to all my performances and brings me flowers and sweetmeats. A mature lady. A widow, innit? Another one? On my word, you are most ill-fortuned, Mr. Bell. Verily, are no young players safe these days from being preyed upon by lecherous old <laughs> ladies? Tis not all ladies, Dr. Foreman. Not this one, anyways. Emma ain't like any of the other ladies I've met. In truth, Dr. Foreman, we wish to be wed. I love her, innit? Ah, uh, then what is your trouble? Well, I've heard tell of some vexing things. There are them that say she has a heart of stone and only marries to get her hands on a man's money. Though I have none, and she's very rich. But she has been widowed many times, and there's even a rumour saying she's had her hand in her husband's deaths. Oh, verily? How shocking. Aye, I must own to being a trifle <laughs> shook by it, and maybe a bit excited as well, uh, but mainly shook, innit? Doubtless you are, for it is most frightening if there be any truth to these rumours. We must consult the stars and see whether it be wise for you to marry. Should Humphrey Bell wed this wealthy widow, and what will become of him if he does? Um, it's been a while since we've dealt with any, you know, sick people. <laughs> as, seeing as I'm a doctor, I just thought I'd point that out. Anyway, let's see what we can do for Humphrey. I think we'll advise him to, to join marriage with... Her and if we can find a choice that tells him to, uh, well, become her, her widow. That does, that's not, that doesn't apply. Widow is always the female, but I don't actually know what or remember the the term. If if he loses her, she might die suddenly. You know. Anyway, House of Wealth. This indicates a reversal of a psychosis. The lady's psychotic instincts regarding the amassing of wealth have changed, indeed. And we know this to be true. Or at least that's what she told me. House of Rumors. This suggests cruelty. The rumors about the lady are cruel. Yeah, this could be the positive one to change, to take, I think. Here we say House of Wills and Inheritance suggests pleasantness. Humphrey can expect a pleasant inheritance from this lady, and she is very rich. House of Children advises faith and rep represents time. In time, and if he keeps faith, Humphrey will have children with this lady. Okay. House of Hidden Motives. This represents a gentle woman. Beneath her exterior, the hat lady harbors hidden motives. Uh, and a death will occur on the couple's honeymoon. The lady has a creative approach to marriage and is not to be trusted. This is not the one we are going for. We are either taking B. I'm not sure... Uh, this might be something that he would love to hear, but it, he doesn't—he doesn't seem to be after the money. That's not the—that's um, not what I read in him, and he's not interested in children either, as far as I'm aware. Uh, he's a romantic person. He just wants to know that she isn't out to kill him, and that the rumors are cruel and false. So I think this is the one we're going with, Mr. Bell. It has been my privilege to guide you over the years, in matters of work and in life. Wisely, I hope, but certainly with the greatest sense of care for your well-being. Indeed, I have come to think of you as a father might think of a son. Tis a responsibility I have not taken lightly, and in loco parentis, as it were, I feel an obligation to... Sir, begging your pardon, sir, but I'm going to stop you right there, because I need to know in it, should I marry Emma or not? Yes. I believe you may safely marry this lady, Mr. Bell. The stars suggest the rumours you did hear about her are needlessly cruel. So it is all lies, then? Well, not quite all lies, nay. The stars do also indicate that the lady was formerly most fixated upon the acquisition of money, though it would seem she no longer harbours such pecuniary passions, such as is consistent with her desire to marry a penniless player such as yourself. 
Uh oh. They just decided. Oh, okay. I shall marry my dear sweet Emma. I'd be honoured if you came to see us wed, Doctor Foreman. If you be not too busy in that. The honour shall be all mine, young Humphrey. All right. Well, he liked that. That's good. The querent did wish to know whether she should marry. He should marry a wealthy widow. I did advise the querent to marry the, a wealthy widow, late Lord, Lady Emma Dyer. Methinks the Quirin is most pleased with me for the reading I gave today. Another lady of a letter of recommendation has also been achieved. Methinks I shall retire from the stage once I am wet. Mayhap do some charity work or something. Good for you, Humphrey. All right, and I suspect, I suspect we are moving into the final stages of the game. I'll cut the episode off here, and then probably. Probably the next one will be the last one. So, uh, yeah, for now, uh, uh, this is Lutz Kitchen signing off. See you tomorrow. And bye bye.